Now we'll start activity ratio. Actually, activity ratio. Tell whether the available resources in the company are being utilized efficiently or not. For example, are you recovering your money from your debtors in time? If not, it can be a big problem for the company. Means so many funds are tied with the debtors and the company can be in tight corner. Are you paying your creditors in time? If not, it means your short-term solvency is not good. Is there any overstock in your company? Or there is position of stock out in your company? For all these answers, you will have to calculate activity ratio. In activity ratios, we will be using a particular term that is turnover. Actually, turnover can be expressed in two ways, either sales or cost of goods sold. Some ratios will be related to sales and some ratios can be related to cost of goods sold and some ratios can be related to either of them. So you have to be very, very careful about this thing. But one thing more, one should be careful. Suppose in some company, some turnover ratio is being calculated with the help of sales. Then it should be calculated for every year with the same item, I mean to say, with sales. I mean to say there should be some consistency in the system. First of all, will take capital turnover ratio, means it establishes relationship between capital and turnover. Basically, it tells how the capital is being used for turnover, and the formula is turnover upon capital times. Generally, all turnover ratios are expressed in times, means how many times sales are being generated with the help of available capital means how efficient capital is being utilized in the company. And you know, capital in this ratio means capital employed. Be careful. And capital employed is equal to shareholder funds plus long-term loans. Or there is one another formula that is fixed assets plus working capital. And shareholder funds are equal to capital plus accumulated profits minus accumulated losses. Suppose in a company, the sales for the year is rupees 1 lakh and the capital employed means average capital employed during the year in this year was only rupees 10,000. So capital turnover ratio will be 1 lakh upon 10,000 times means 10 times. What it means? the available capital employed can generate 10 times sales. It means if you want to increase the sales, you will have to increase the capital employed. If other factors are the same, we can say if you want to increase your sales from 1 lakh to 2 lakh, you will have to increase your capital employed 10,000 to 20,000 rupees. Now the question is, how much should be the capital turnover ratio? 
Actually, we can't specify whether it's three times is the best one or four times or five times. Actually, it all that depends upon the average capital turnover ratio in that industry. Suppose you are assembling computer, and in that industry, the average is, I mean to say, average capital turnover ratio is three times, and you invest 10 lakh rupees. It means you are expected to generate sales at least 30 lakhs. If you invest 20 lakh rupees, it means you should generate 60 lakhs sales. If, suppose, you invest 20 lakhs rupees, but you start generating sales of rupees 80 lakhs, it means your utilization of the capital employed is much better as compared to others. Suppose in a company, shareholder funds are 4 lakhs, long-term loans 8 lakhs, gross profit is 8 lakhs, and gross profit is 20% on cost. Calculate capital turnover ratio. You know, capital turnover ratio is net sales upon capital employed times. But we don't have any net sales as per this question. And so far this capital employed is concerned, that is equal to Shareholder funds plus long-term loans. Shareholder funds are 4 lakhs and long-term loans 8 lakhs. It means capital employed in this question is 12 lakh rupees. Now we are looking for net sales. You know, just think about one formula where sales are included. For example, cost of goods sold is equal to net sales minus gross profit. So it means net sales is equal to cost of goods sold plus gross profit. And gross profit is 8 lakhs. Now we are looking for cost of goods sold. That's very simple because they have given us some hint about this thing that gross profit is 20% on cost. If gross profit is 20, then the cost is 100. But in reality, our gross profit is 8 lakh rupees. It means the cost should be 100 upon 20 into 8 lakh. That is equal to 40 lakhs. It means the cost of goods sold in this company is 40 lakhs and the gross profit is 8 lakhs. You know, cost of goods sold plus gross profit is equal to sales. So 40 lakhs plus 8 lakhs is equal to 48 lakhs. It means 48 lakhs is the sales of this company. So what should be the capital turnover ratio? You know the formula is net sales upon capital employed. And our total sales are 48 lakhs upon capital employed is 12 lakhs, means four times. It means in this company, if they invest 100 rupees, they can generate sales of 400 rupees. Suppose the company plans to increase the sales and if there is direct connection between capital employed and sales, they can increase their capital employed and increase their sales subsequently. But to increase the capital employed, we need two things. Either we should have our own money, means own capital, or we can borrow the funds from outside, means from bank or some other lending institute. So in this way, the company can borrow the funds and increase the sales or can invest its own money in the way of share capital and increase the sales. But be careful. When we plan to borrow the funds from the banks and expand the sales, we must compare the rate of interest. 